And I'm Andre Molino here with Ed Peoples doing another video interview. Today is July 13th, 2018. Alright, so let's get started. An important statement you emphasize is that without active resistance, an overwhelming... Start again. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Last time I had paper. An important statement you emphasize is that without active resistance and regular reform efforts in education, White supremacy in the U.S. continues unabated. In fact, it might seem a bit overwhelming for young activists to see from reading your memoir how similar the issues, such as corruption and law enforcement, remain from for them today. How would you counsel you today who are leading resistance movements such as Black Lives Matter, the Occupy Movement, sex trafficking vigilance workshops, or anti-sweatshops protests on university campuses? Well, first of all, thanks for the opportunity to uh, make contact with Lexington and UK and uh, the old wonderful intriguing time I had out there. I had a great education there and a lot of intriguing experiences which I doubt we'll have time to get to today. But, uh, but before answering the question specifically, uh, I want you to know that I, I don't presume to be able to uh, tell people what to do who are down on the on the street these days, but um, but there are my 60 years have uh, suggested to me things that I think uh, justice movements or peace movements might uh, it might enhance those. So I'll go through a couple of those. Uh, essentially, we I feel that we have to upgrade the, these organizations in a way. We must try to be as as good as uh, as uh, the NRA on the Koch brothers and, and the Heritage Foundation and Freedom Works and the Federal Society and all the others who got the edge on us now in terms of their uh, skill and resources and so forth. Um, but some of the things that I think could be done is first we need some kind of research uh, and communications arm to any uh, any movement organization at this point and, and uh, making noise on the street is important for inciting the emotion and getting started but it doesn't have the staying power for social change and cultural change so uh, and uh, using attack dogs and so forth is, uh, it appeals to me, but it's, it, it just doesn't work on the, in the long run. Uh, so we need to keep, keep the movement going beyond the, uh, the excitement on the streets. We need to, for example, we need to uh, build a material culture. By that I mean uh, we need to have a record, we need to have a research and uh, position papers and, and uh, everybody, and they have to be uh, reduced for everybody to understand and, uh, and distribute to our to, uh, members, the members of our movement and also to leave, leave any uh, demonstration with, uh, with uh, uh, a clear message that we have, are bringing to the fore. And so that's, that's uh, really important. Also, part of that message should depend on compelling and vivid stories and accounts uh, from both victims and witnesses of the injustices we're talking about in any given, and those should be powerful, they should be demonstrated in lots of ways, in media and verbally and so forth. Um, and uh, there must be a way to uh, accumulate uh, needed uh, data and so forth. As an old sociologist, uh, I uh, found that in teaching, uh, for men for 30 years that data would speak for itself. I didn't have to take a political position because the data uh, on inequality spoke for itself. 
So every demonstration needs to uh, find a succinct way to, uh, to distribute their message to their opponents, the press, and the public. Another thing they need to do is to think about refilling their ranks. Uh, nearly everyone uh, gets tired, uh, loses interest, uh, their energies are depleted, and their daily lives call them back to do other things. And so we have to be in a mode that of constant recruitment and for the next generation so that we don't lose momentum simply by you losing numbers. Now look, at, look back at some of the uh, movements and the demonstrations we've seen and how they became depleted by uh, not recruiting. And that makes, that's a hard thing to do. To do that, we, we need to uh, make it easy for demonstration. It, easy to do the work of uh, the other work, the office work, the communications, and all the other things that have to be done to make a, uh, a peace or a, a anti-racist uh, organization go, go forward. So uh, uh, sometimes the demonstrations, they have to be sure there's a logistics person in charge. Now a lot of them are careful about that. They have toilets, they have water, they have uh, a host of things to, to uh, make it easy for people. Some people have have special needs. Uh, people with children need child care maybe on some occasions. And disabled need, they, they don't want to be left at home either for these things. So that has to be in count. Now we also need powerful analyses and something that can be often done by academics. And I want to suggest to you uh, and the viewers of this uh, three books that meant, have meant a lot to me. Uh, and the first one is a book, a book called Invention of the White Race. It's by Ted Allen, a friend of mine, uh, and is, has wide distribution. It's called Democracy in Chains, The Deep History of the Radical, I'm sorry, The Invention of the White Race, and it's a history which can relieve us of the cynical notion that white supremacy is inevitable because it's the history of how white supremacy, racial slavery, and all the rest got started in America. And it started right here in Virginia. And Kentucky collaborated. Uh, because it was part of Virginia when, when it started. Uh, the second book is Democracy in Chains, The Deep History of Radical Right, Stealth Plan for America. I characterize this as uh, telling us how we got here to a place where economic inequality does a better job of exploiting people than just plain old white supremacy. Because now they encompass uh, uh, the kind of inequality that's occurred in this country. Economic in inequality has, uh, now includes not only people of color, but people uh, of impoverishment in all, in all categories. The, the last book I think of is really crucial. It's sort of a manual to me. It's a manual about coping every day. I call it, uh, I characterize it as showing us how little human rights actions mean so much more than we ever suspected because they are cumulative. And uh, this woman has done a remarkable job of showing that accumulation which means that Racism is repeated every day so that we never get to the end of it. So that is really important to me. And those four books have not only inspired me, but they've given me answers of where to turn.